Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Western Wayne Work Session. Tonight we have our uh, board agenda review for the Board of Education. And following that, we will move into our overview of our uh, health and safety plan and uh, any questions by the board to follow. Uh, after uh, we do the presentation, uh, throughout, excuse me, throughout the duration of the presentation, there is an email account that you can email questions to. Uh, at this point, we are collecting those questions because this is in draft form. We will be having parent sessions uh, Monday and Tuesday of next week to address concerns with them, uh, as well as, um, as well as we're looking to uh, speak with teachers over the course of the next several days as well to inform them of uh, more details of the plan as well as to answer some more specific questions. So uh, this evening again is an overview uh, of, of our plan. It will be posted on the district website uh, for the next week and then the official vote to approve the plan will be on August, August 5th. Yeah. So uh, if Nobody has any questions regarding that process. Uh, we'll begin with the board agenda. Everybody should have one in front of them. So after our roll call, we have our approval of minutes, number six. And on the page, we have our treasurer's report, number seven. Approval of bills, number eight. We will have a, a section for recognition of public. Again, due to the governor restrictions of no more than 25 individuals in a given space, uh, the public portion of the, the, uh, the meeting next week will also be uh, virtual. So again, we'll have a similar format in terms of uh, filing questions and, and, and comments. Uh, moving forward, number 10, uh, it is, we're recommending that as a result of our current status and where we stand from a uh, COVID standpoint, that we're recommending, uh, number one, that our in-service days be moved to September 2nd and, and Thursday, Thursday, September, September 3rd, 3rd, and that the first day of school be moved to Tuesday, September 8th. Uh, we still have a, a lot of planning. Uh, and as you'll see in our presentation moving forward, we're awaiting some more supplies. Uh, and again, we're working in our subcommittees to more uh, finely tune our building specific procedures as well as our uh, developing our curriculum for students that when we, we have a potential for a virtual format. Uh, the letter C is a recommendation for uh, a noon dismissal teacher act 80 day, which was an act 80 day. Uh, I'm sorry, noon dismissal act 80 day for, for Columbus day, Monday, October 12th. It will now be an act 80 day upon approval. And then letter D would be uh, Martin Luther King day, January 18th, moving from an in-service day to no school on that on that one day. Matt, can I just ask one question? Um, the new dismissal, the teacher act day for Columbus Day, what was in place of that before on the calendar? I don't have that in front of me. Columbus Day prior to was a day off. Okay, and are we changing that because well we figure with the start of the school year being pushed forward or pushed back to, to September 8th. Um, that would give us an opportunity to regroup with the staff rather than having that day off and uh, debrief, put in any other resources that we may need at that point, um, depending on where we're at in terms of uh, status in school, out of school, whatever it may be at that time. And then Martin Luther King, we did not have off. We did not. Correct? So did we replace that with another day? Do you know what I mean? Like, what day did we have off, or we're just putting one to a We're just taking that out. Basically, it's a, it keeps this calendar timeline similar because one was a day off, one wasn't. We just flipped which one was a day off, which one was. So we originally didn't have that off, correct? Mark, what's your name? We, 
this year, we, because of prior years with snow days and everything, we, we made it an in-service day, Act 80, noon dismissal. So my question is, at this point in time, I know everybody wants to do it because of what's happening in the world. Can, can we change that back if we need to? Heading back. And we we, we can change it. Yes, we can change it. So up in the air with in and out. We, and I know the client. We, we can change it back um, at this point. I would not recommend it just because, uh, you know, we're still looking into the possibility of, well, as you'll see uh, on another agenda item, we're, pa we're hoping to pass a resolution that would allow us to utilize virtual instruction, a hybrid approach or uh, at school qual to qualify for 180 days instruction or to meet our hourly requirement of 990. So uh, if that's the case, we're waiting for clarification on whether or not we need flexible instructional days uh, and we could just utilize our programming as it currently, well not currently stands, will be at that point of the school year. So we, we have that flexibility if there's a snow day potentially to say we're, we're, we're virtual. Okay, uh, number 11 are the Act 80 days for uh, the entire school year. This is just a, a revision from what we currently have. Again, letter A is September 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. The, the thought behind that is making those first four days of, of school dismissals so that we can get the kids in, allow them to learn the, the new procedures, the safety measures we have put in place, get the students acclimated uh, with transportation, all of those, uh, those, those things, things that we are currently working on, uh, it, it's going to be new for everybody. So it also gives the teachers an opportunity to work with kids to see how effective it is, what we put in place. Uh, and then when the students are dismissed, the teachers will have in-service time to debrief, review what we've done, and we could also provide other professional development as needed. So uh, that's why we incorporated those first four days as, as noon dismissals. Letter B is October 12th. Again, that would be Columbus Day changing from a day off to an in-service day, November 11th, uh, which is, um, uh, that is Veterans Day, I believe, correct? That falls on the day, which is typically we have the assembly not on Veterans Day because of their obligations in other places. So we, we still will have our assembly pending and we're able to. Uh, February 12th and then March 12th uh, would be, those were already scheduled in our prior calendar. Number 12 uh, is our resolution for our flexibility to meet the minimum instructional time requirements in the event of an emergency. So due to the, the, the fact that the WHO declared COVID a global pandemic uh, and an emergency, this would give us the authority to work within those parameters. Number 13 is an employee quarantine resolution. This resolution basically puts on notice staff members that if they travel, outside of Pennsylvania to one of the designated states that uh, would require them to quarantine for 14 days, that they have ample notice and that we can require them to go home and, and uh, if they have the capabilities to work from home at that, at that time, we can allow that, that that would be on a case by case basis. So um, that, that's just giving them higher notice, notice that, uh, that, that is, is the, the situation. situation. That would be determined based upon, uh, yeah, CDC guidelines, WHO, uh, PDE recommendations. Uh, we're, you know, we're working with the Family First Act currently to determine uh, what types of leave are appropriate, to what extent they're appropriate, uh, if. Uh, employees able to work from home, what accommodations can we reasonably uh, provide for them? 
I'm sorry. I don't know. Yeah, Mike, if you don't mind unmuting, just. Well, I, I guess the question is, will they be required to take a COVID test? If, they're, if they are demonstrating symptoms, um, you, you know, similar to if we have a student, and again, this is all in the plan, that they would be sent home and then either have a doctor's note or a, or a negative COVID test upon return. Okay, I'm just saying, if they come back from the state, they take a COVID No, they're still required to quarantine for 14 days, or they cannot re return to work for 14 days. Correct, because because the symptoms may not may not present themselves until four or five, six days later. Okay. Matt, just since there's a position where they cannot work from home, there's no normal whatever, right? So how do they use those days? Is it sick days, vacation? Like then what happens? Well, uh, again, we're within the family's first act. Uh, fam an individual that may not work from home would be required to take a leave of FMLA. Uh, employees do get 10 COVID days, which essentially are days that we would provide them to quarantine for that 14 day period. Uh, and if they require longer periods of time, we, we there is an FMLA that up to a certain point, I believe it's ten thousand dollars. We there, there is a pay of up to two thirds of their salary over that duration. Are we just going to require the teachers to quarantine if they go out of the any school? staff member? We've already had to do it. What? Any staff member? But what about students? Students as well. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, moving along to number 14, that is the approval of the actual plan. Again, that plan will be on our website uh, starting tomorrow for public view as a draft. This is a draft. Again, this is subject to change based upon any recommendation that we get or guidance that changes as a result, or if we deem appropriate according to what, what we find through the course of our planning over the next several weeks. So the plan is subject to change and will be reviewed and revised as needed. Number 15 is an authorization for the board uh, to allow us to deposit our general fund into Honesdale National Bank. Uh, and along with that goes the interest and principal for all bond payments that come during the period of July 1st through June 30th of, of next year. So that we've been working with Honesdale Bank for years, is correct, Rose? Number 16 are the annual service contracts that we renew, uh, make, uh, elevator maintenance, um, uh, fire, alarm. fire alarm, security alarms, et cetera, those types of contracts. So. I believe we did a uh, contract with the NRG as well for HVAC, ventilation, et cetera. 17 is a real estate tax rebate. Uh, there was an appeal made in front of um, the appeal board, I guess. So th this property has a rebate amount of $612 in Sterling Township. And it is a rebate due to land appraisal correction. We did have that reviewed by uh, Attorney Mayor. Number 18 is a board policy. Uh, through our audit, while it wasn't necessarily uh, a finding by any means, they asked us to change the wording of our policy from 
uh, how we char charge our meals. Rose could be a little bit more specific as to, I remember Maria Liptak describing the, the verbiage, the student meal charging. Thank you. Yes, they thought it. They, yes, thank you. So basically, they, they felt the language could be somewhat discriminatory the way it was worded. So we, we tweaked it so that it, it's not as a specific. Uh, so we, that, that is the updated policy. Number 19, we have uh, two memorandum of, of understanding. Uh, the first one is for our full-time elementary special education position. Uh, we are uh, attempting, attempting to, to implement, implement uh, an elementary special education program. Uh, we do not have the, the staff currently to house that. So this would allow us the, the, the flexibility at the end of the year if that program, does, or if the, the, the population of students does not dictate the need for the, the position, then we are able to collapse the position at that time. If it does, then we would make that a full-time per, per, uh, full employee. Number 18, this is uh, just an, an updated um, MOU for the weight room position, the after school professional development MOU that we put in place last year so that we can contract with an external agency rather than have uh, staff that we, that our, our own staff uh, work in the weight room. Rather, we decided to go with a, a certified group so that we can more appropriately have our students trained. Number 20 are handbook revisions and updates as listed teacher handbooks, student handbooks, coaches, advisors, paras, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 21 is the school safety and security coordinator. Uh, I am taking the title of that again this year. Uh, we have, uh, again, last month we had to do our safety and security update, the border port, uh, we, we just making sure that we're providing all the necessary safety training uh, and updating our, our policies and, and procedures as necessary. 22 are our, our drivers uh, and substitutes. Uh, 23, 22 is the approval of driver and substitutes. Uh, 2023 20, are contracts and basically until we can get all the contracts uh, solidified, uh, we're currently working on those, but it does give me the authority to approve them on a temporary basis and to operate so that we can get our kids here before formal approval, pending all that necessary documentation, paperwork, et cetera. Number 24, um, the next several are annual updates that we have, um, that we've worked with over the past several years. 24 is an agreement with Head Start uh, and Lackawanna, Scranton Lackawanna Human Development Agency. Uh, 25 is our agreement with New Story and their daily tuition rates of $255, $350 or $500 per day depending on the level of student need. 26 is our agreement with uh, PA Treatment and Healing uh, for any alternative placements that we need throughout the course of the school year. Uh, and the, the rates are there for uh, regular ed and special ed students. Dr. Barrett, any other rates uh, different than what they have been in the past? You know, if any of them have changed up or down? I do believe the rates for PATH went up slightly. I think they were in the mid 70s last year. Rose, do you have that off the top of your head? But um, they, they did increase slightly. Thank you. Number 27 is an agreement with, with Guidelight to provide 
uh, in-house counseling services, crisis counseling for our students um, at the middle and high school levels. Uh, 28 is an agreement for dual enrollment, and that is with Lackawanna College. And I know we're still waiting on some of the, some other documentation to come in from uh, Johnson College with, uh, I believe with Lackawanna, Mr. Kogorski, we have approximately 11 dual enrollment courses that students are able to take with, with Lackawanna, correct? I, I think um, the uh, Lackawanna chief, uh, when, uh, I think the Johnson agreement that we're working on will be ready for September, I believe there's more courses to 11 than Johnson. Okay, thank you. So eight with Johnson, approximately 11 with, I'm sorry, eight with Lackawanna, approximately 11 with Johnson. Number 29 is our agreement for an interpreter and the hourly rates uh, for those services, 40 hours, $40 an hour during the week, 45 um, Saturday, Sunday, and holidays. Um, we do have the need to have interpreters uh, at our professional development, our, our in-service days at the beginning of the year and periodically throughout the course of the year. 30 is, um, oh, I, I'm sorry, this is an agreement with the Western Pennsylvania School for the Deaf, uh, which was effective July 20 at the cost of $2,000 per student. That is over the course of this summer. So, so it was based, based upon student need. Uh, it's just an approval for that service. 31 is an agreement with uh, Victims Intervention and Prevention. Uh, we utilize those services throughout the school year with our guidance department, uh, as, as well as with our administration. Uh, and again, it's recommended through the uh, student assistance program. 32 uh, is an agreement between Western Wayne and the Wayne County Office of Behavioral Health and Development, as well as early intervention. And again, that is uh, to assist our student assistance program in providing necessary services uh, deemed appropriate. 33 is an agreement with St. Joseph's Center uh, for any students that would need uh, to utilize their services and the rates thereof. 34 and 35, the purchase of bread and the purchase of milk. Uh, those, those are the, the same companies, companies that, that we've utilized over the past several years as well. It's just renewing the contracts with them to provide those services. Um, 36 is an updated job description uh, for our assistant director of special education who uh, we've been working to uh, update all, all of our um, our job descriptions over the course of the last several years. Uh, this is the most recent one that, uh, that we, we were able to adjust as necessary. 37 is the district substitute list. 30, excuse me, 37A is the district substitute list for approval. Uh, 37B, we, ha we do have two sabbatical requests, one for restoration of health and one for, for professional development. Um, those we did need to post those positions and uh, look at long-term substitutes uh, for those. Letter C, we have a retirement, a custodial retirement effective December 30th. Letter D, we have appointments for long-term substitutes for the, for the year, as you can see, um, due to the uh, two sabbatical requests, as well as for the long-term special ed position, uh, we do have recommendations that we will discuss in executive session. Thirty-seven E is the uh, temporary part-time art position at Ever. Uh, I'm sorry, at R. D. Wilson, and uh, again, we'll, we'll review that in executive session. <coughs> Letter F is a transfer. This is for one of the paraprofessional positions for that special ed classroom that we discussed at the elementary level. 
the individual is currently in the cafeteria staff and we're looking to do a transfer to uh, the paraprofessional realm. Letter G is an appointment for the second paraprofessional and then letter H is the appointment of a mentor for uh, the part-time art position. 37I is an approval of the elementary student assistance program members as listed. And then letter J is an approval of volunteers for the 2021 school year, depending on necessary clearances, regulations, et cetera. We will be looking at a student intern for September through May uh, with um, our, our social worker. And we have a correspondence, federal programming reports, other business, et cetera. So that is our agenda. Does anybody have any questions at this time regarding any items on the agenda? Okay. Uh, so moving forward, uh, again, this we're moving into the portion of the meeting where we will uh, re go over our, con or not our continuity of ed, excuse me, our health and safety plan for the start of the school year and our uh, educational options that we will be providing for families uh, at, at least for the start of the school year and potentially throughout the remainder of the school year. So um, let me get my screen up here with the PowerPoint so everybody can view it. Is everyone able to see that on their computers? I do have a paper copy. There we go. Mr. Gersh, you can see that now? Yep, very clearly, thank, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, Dr. Rosa and I uh, will go over the, the PowerPoint presentation, answer any questions our board might have. We will continue to collect email questions over the course of the remainder of the meeting. We will have the PowerPoint as well as our, um, our full plan available online for everyone to view. And then again, at the August 5th meeting would be the formal approval of the plan. Is the audio still okay? Okay. Uh, before we get into the plan itself, I just wanna take a minute to thank Dr. Rosa for all of her hard work with this. I wanna thank our administrative team, um, our association members, uh, our nurses, uh, 
Wayne County, Pike County Emergency Management, um, <coughs> Wayne Memorial Hospital administrators, as well as uh, several physicians, Department of Health, uh, all of the individuals that assisted us with this plan uh, in collaboration with Wayne Highlands, Wallenpaw Pack, uh, and even Delaware Valley to a certain extent. Um, we have collaborated on this plan so that we're as consistent as we can possibly be. The, the three districts came up with uh, the concept that we'd like to do 80% of the plan as identical as possible so that the procedures we're doing can match each other. Uh, we're, we're in a consortium together, so we need to make sure that uh, what we're doing is consistent across the three districts. However, we, we realize that each district is going to have their own unique situations that they're going to need to tweak the plan uh, to meet their needs. And even within our district, this overarching plan is going to be more tightly defined to meet our own building needs throughout uh, Western Wayne. So, Again, this is the overarching plan. Uh, this plan is fluid. Uh, it, it, you know, we, we need to be able to manipulate the plan as, we, as, as being necessary. Uh, we need to adjust on a daily basis to whatever's changing around us in terms of <clears throat> both local and uh, state and national situations. So, um, Again, I, I just wanted to thank everybody for their hard work for continuing to push forward. This was not an easy task, not an easy task. We, we've been racking our brains uh, to put together the plan, uh, to make it as effective as we, we can possibly make it. However, we are not health officials, which made it difficult at times, which is why we collaborated with Wayne Memorial Hospital. We provided them with copies of our plans, we reviewed it, we had few meetings with them, they're putting together some materials for us so that we can have information both in the school, on our website, uh, in the nurse's office. Uh, they're coming out with a video that the doctor is putting together with guidelines and recommendations for, for families uh, to hear, so that will be coming out shortly as well. Um, that's kind of the background of where we really got to, and you'll see as we go through. And this does not want to change slides. So the, the health and safety plan, basically the goal is to get kids back in school as safely as possible. We want as many kids here, we want all of our kids here. We want to make sure that when they're here, they're safe. We want to make sure that our staff is safe. And we want to make sure that we can be as consistent as possible in what we're doing to make sure that that plan is uh, being effectively implemented on a daily basis. Day-to-day uh, -day procedures, protocols, etc. Transportation, sanitation. Uh, we've been ironing out these details daily, and then changing daily as you know, we're getting more and more guidance. So we do have three phases that we're working within. Originally, when the guidance came out from the state, we were still under the guidance of green, yellow, and red phases. What does it look like within each phase? As I guess I'm kind of veered away from the green, yellow, and red at the state level, we still are, are focused on those three tracks. Uh, as as um, we continue our planning, we said stick with it um, because we can maneuver between the three at, at any forward. So, again, this will give us a little bit about how the education will be delivered. Dr. Rose will, will be explaining those parameters and then some of the expectations that we have in place. So the timeline, starting June 22nd, our parent survey went out. Uh, our first meeting with the pandemic committee will be June 24th. We formed subgroups thereafter. Uh, we met with our, our nurses and, and safety uh, and, and other safety committees uh, with, with them to, to get their input. And they continue to be on the committee as well as the board. Um, tonight, we have another large pandemic committee 
uh, the group at the band uh, had several administrative meetings along the way. In our most recent pandemic meeting, July 22nd, and we also have another one coming up on this Friday as well. So this slide gives you a little idea of who we met with and when we met with them. July um, 1st, we had our initial meeting with Wayne Memorial uh, to just get a, a baseline of where we should start and what direction we should go. Uh, that was very productive. We came out of that meeting feeling like we're, we're in a good place. We, we're, we're doing good things and this, this is realistic. Uh, shortly thereafter, the, <laughs> the governor came out and said, now you have to wear masks uh, and put, put in some new restrictions in terms of uh, limiting people and congregations. So uh, we maneuvered throughout all of that and, and continued to move forward. But um, again, you can see the meeting dates with Wayne Highlands and Walla Paw Pack. Uh, again, meetings with Department of Health, uh, Emergency Management. And uh, at one point, Dr. LaRosa and I met with uh, Wayne Island on the Paw Pack and went line by line, 37 pages of our plan in each category, red, yellow, and green, to make sure that we're as identical as possible. Uh, but we did, again, make sure that we we're also meeting the unique needs of individual buildings as well as individual uh, districts. There will be a video press release, as I just mentioned earlier, coming out from uh, Wayne Memorial uh, today. Tonight is our draft presentation to the board. And we will be having a final survey for parents to go out to make what they call an education declaration uh, to determine if they feel it's safe or appropriate to send their kids here, uh, as well as uh, will they be taking advantage of the options we have, as well as it, it's going to allow us to understand how many kids we potentially can have here from day one, and then how many students we're going to need for transportation purposes, whether or not we're in the red, yellow, or green, well, I should say red or green uh, pathways. And again, uh, you get to, I'm still coming through, okay. So, the, if you take a look at uh, the list of, of individuals and organizations that we've collabor collaborated with along the way and will continue to do so, uh, there you have it. So we did try to make this as, uh, as well-rounded as possible, getting input from multiple stakeholders, trying to meet the needs of our students and our families, trying to meet the needs of our staff, working within the, the, the guidelines of CDC, WHO, PDE, you name it. Um, it it's been a, just a, a tremendous effort on everybody's behalf. And with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Rabrosa. Okay, so we're going to start with the data. So first and foremost, we just wanted to say on behalf of the admin team, thank you to the 700 households who completed the survey. It was a great deal of information that we did collect and we were able to do a data analysis to basically hear where families are at at this point. So what did the survey tell us? Well, the first thing that we heard, we heard a couple uh, developing themes, but the first theme was that 62% of their kid, uh, their families need the kids to go back to school in some type of capacity. So 62%, you will notice though that 26% were undecided and basically families just wanted more information. So we did expect that. Also another theme was families want their children to go back to school on assigned days. That was their top choice if we had to discuss a hybrid model. Also, there was some information about transportation and 71% of the respondents did indicate that they would be in need of district transportation. Just some other things that we did notice too were things like scheduling. So families asked us when we were taking a look at scheduling to please group children in the household together. We do uh, recognize that it was difficult for some to try and manage kids at different levels and 
from different buildings. And also the idea of uh, flexibility for families and the other theme, the final theme in that area talked about safety. Obviously, we want your kids to be safe. We want families to feel comfortable. And that's why I think you'll see that this presentation presents um, some options for families. Okay, we're not locked into one learning path. The other thing that we took a look at when we did the data analysis was there were three open-ended questions. So really we had the potential to take a look at 1,200 responses, um, or excuse me, 2,100 responses, and be able to read the comments that were put in there. And if anyone would like to take a look at them, board members, this is the uh, data that we got back from families. And it was very telling. Uh, you know, things that we knew, but some things that we didn't know. And it was great to see the, it through the lens of parents or grandparents or individuals that were trying to work with their children from March through the end of the school year. So some of those themes that seemed to develop around education were that they were asking us to provide more live instruction. We understood that. They are asking for some uh, more structure that they felt like you know, we were trying to put this together, but they would like to see us moving forward with a little bit more structure um, and consistency. And I, I think that we as the administrative team would agree. They also wanted the work to be meaningful and to count. So we have to have conversations about what attendance is gonna look like, what grades are going to look like. And then finest, uh, finally, an increase in communication and scheduling as well. So again, Thank you to the families that did provide that data. It was highly beneficial with the administrative team and then also for the uh, committee members moving forward in, in developing this plan. So some of the challenges that we face, not only as a district, but also as a community, are, you know, public education is under attack right now. You can't even turn the TV on and, and the cyber ads are there. And what we want to say to families are we have learning paths that are far better than the cyber options that exist out there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those. But also, we understand that families are passionate about education. And there's some strong beliefs that are out there. Things like, is this pandemic real? Is it a hoax? Do we mask? Do we not mask? Um, you know, we acknowledge that those, those beliefs are out there, and our goal is to meet every family where they are at and have an honest communication and conversation about what's going to work best for your family. So, what are we going to do? Well, here's just a couple areas of things that we must do. Uh, we really need to get creative and think outside the box. This is something that I never thought I'd be challenged with to try to figure this out. There's not really information out there. You know, there's no textbook that we can just pick up and follow. So we're going to really need to get creative. And I think our staff has stepped up and met that challenge. They did an amazing job in March being able to just jump right into Google Classrooms and adapt and, and you know, be resilient. Also, like I said, we need to meet each family where they're at. We're not judging your beliefs, but it is our responsibility to continue to educate your children. Also, it is our desire to continue to support our educators. You know, this is not something that they necessarily learned in their training as well. So being able to help them develop and become proficient in the Google platform. Also, provide support and services to our families remotely. And again, like I said, we do have a cyber program here. Um, we are looking to expand that cyber program down to kindergarten, and we think that we can do it well. And then also, the biggest uh, challenge is to, to focus on solutions and not dwell on the problems. And as I was going through this, two things that just kept coming to mind, flexibility and communication. Things are constantly changing. And as Dr. Barrett said, we've walked out of many meetings where we spent the entire day there and we had a plan only to drive home and get an email that kind of rocked the boat and made us come back to the table. So flexibility and communication are, are going to be extremely important. 
And like I said, you're going to hear me talking a lot about this idea of learning paths, options for your family. And then also it's going to be up to the families to decide what works best for them and what they're comfortable with. So our goal is to meet families, to meet the needs of all of our families. So when Dr. Barrett talked about this green phase, what we mean by that is we are hoping that kids are going to be able to return to school five days a week for in-person instruction. Now, if you as a parent or guardian say, I'm not really comfortable with that, even though the school is going to provide that, what are my options? Well, one of the options could be that your child is going to remotely learn and attend live classes from home. Also, like I mentioned, we do have the cyber program that is kindergarten through 12th grade. So if that is a question or you have any um, concerns about that, I would urge all families to reach out to their building administrators. Um, if it is a student that has special needs, reach out to instructional services. Uh, but like Dr. Barrett said, next week we're going to be offering some parent nights where it'll, it'll be specific to the elementary on Monday night, and then the secondary parent night will be offered on Tuesday. So those are some of the options, and let me just mention for the pre-K kiddos, so what we have decided to do was we'd like to offer two full days per week of in-person instruction, and then on that third day, it would be a half day of remote learning, okay? So that is what our, our green would look like. When we talk about the yellow phase, this is more of the idea of the hybrid learning. So student, students would attend, uh, excuse me, attend school every other day for in-person instruction. And again, this idea of household scheduling. So if there are multiple children in the home, we would look to have all those kids come to do in-person instruction together. On the days when students are not in school, they would be uh, learning remotely using that district device and they would be receiving a uh, live instruction. And then again, if that is not going to work for whatever reason, maybe there is a medical concern, maybe there's just a family concern where you don't even want to allow your child to come to school every other day, you would also then have that option a learning path would be to continue to learn from home five days a week with that live instruction. And again, if both of those options don't work for you, there's also the district cyber program as well. And then finally, the red phase option. So again, this is where students would be learning remotely from home. Once again, we would be providing uh, the child or the students with a device. And if you just feel like you do not want your child to be in live instruction, so when I'm saying live instruction, I mean our Google platform, you would also then have the option to be a part of our cyber program, which is a little bit different. So just to recap, there's a green, there's a yellow. So green is five days in person. The yellow is going to look more like a hybrid where it would be every other day. And then red would be the kids are at home every single day. Okay, so just some information uh, about what, we're, what we've been working on for in-person instruction. And again, this is just little snippets from our lengthy health and safety plan. And again, we will be talking a little bit more about this during the parent nights. But the subcommittees have been talking about cleaning and what that's going to look like with our ventilation and our HVAC, our HVAC systems, and our custodians. We've also talked a great deal about social distancing and in the classrooms, in the hallways, in the cafeteria, and what that's going to look like for our students. Transportation, again, when we put out the educational declaration survey, which will coming out soon, we'll, we're going to ask families, if you are able, could you bring your, chil your child or your children to school? If not, let us know, and we will go ahead and start making rosters. But what that would look like at this time is two students per seat, masked, 
unless they're from the same household and then we could put three in a seat. Again, signage is going to be everywhere in our buildings, um, just as some reminders in those high traffic areas and also in the hall. So again, masks. I know this is a, a hot topic, and what I'm going to say about that is we as a district are not making that decision. We are following the directive that we are required to do so. If you are a parent or a guardian who for whatever reason does not feel that your child could wear a face covering, whether it's a mask, whether it's a shield, a bandana, a face covering, if you do not want your child to wear that, I would ask you to reach out to a building principal again and further discuss the learning paths that you feel comfortable with. Just keep in mind too that we will be incorporating mask breaks into our day. And, and we're gonna fold this into our PBIS, certainly at the elementary, but then also at the secondary level as well. And then again, personal hygiene, you'll see hand sanitizer is everywhere, um, especially in those high traffic locations. And students will also be encouraged to wash their hands throughout the day as well. Materials. Whenever possible, students are not going to be sharing materials, and also the student areas will be cleaned in between usage. And then again, the monitoring students and staff for symptoms. So again, we're going to be working with our, our faculty and our staff to talk about what some of the symptoms look like and what uh, the appropriate response to those symptoms would be. We're also asking all of our staff and students to go through a checklist prior to coming to work or to school. And certainly if a child is sick and, and demonstrating any of those symptoms, please do not allow them to go on a bus or a van. We ask that you keep them home. We do understand that that makes some families nervous about attendance. And at this point, we will monitor attendance but we do recognize that we're going to have to exercise some flexibility. And again, I go back to flexibility and I go back to communication. Those are two very important things. So then again, just some general points. Our school and our community must unite in the common belief that safety is the most important thing. If there is an illness or if there is any concern, please, please, students and staff, stay home. We would rather that you um, err on the side of caution. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. And then COVID-19 information changes daily, and you heard Dr. Barrett say that. So again, we, we really need to be flexible and we need to understand that as a school, we could potentially be moving in and out of the in-person to the hybrid to the red rather quickly. And we will do our best to communicate that information to families as quickly as possible. We, we did hear families. We did take that uh, survey seriously. We will be putting out some additional surveys. Uh, there will be a survey for our families who have students with special needs, but there will also be the educational declaration survey as well. And like I said, I just wanted to throw it back in there again. Monday, August 3rd at 7 p.m., there will be an elementary parent night that will be held virtually. August 4th, Tuesday, will be a secondary parent night at 7 p.m. as well. And then again, just in closing, uh, we really do want to work together. We understand that this is a very difficult situation. So that survey will be coming out. We will be asking families to complete that survey by August 12th. If after the parent nights, and after the survey and additional information comes out from the building level, if you still have questions, please reach out to the building administrator or special education. 
questions. Yes, sir. Well, currently, if one is has a fever, that that's only one symptom of COVID. There could be several. So unless they're demonstrating several symptoms, and it's we, we know that they've been exposed to COVID, then I would keep both home. But otherwise, if one is not demonstrating symptoms, then they they can attend. But unless we have a tracing of uh, information that we can prove that there's contact for an extended period of time with somebody who has COVID positive, then even if they're not demonstrating it's that, that's when the 14 day would be implemented. Yes, it, with the video that comes out with uh, from Way Memorial, there'll be more of that information to come out to, to, to clarify what families can look for, what, can, what they can do, what resources they have available if they don't have insurance or they can't get to the hospitals or local uh, health facility that they, they can access uh, to, to get a test. Okay. Um, with the every other day when we go yellow, is it going to be on the six day rotation or is it, which is so confusing? Is there a way we can keep it Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, and do a Friday and teacher and service? Because I, I never know what day it is. Well, the, the so how does that work? The students will be every other day, no matter what. The, the six-day cycle will just be an internal uh, schedule so that we know what schedules the students would be attending on that day, especially at the elementary level. And then, for, you know, whatever courses at the high school level that would dictate it, it, what day they would be in um, still again. Is there an easier way to do that? Is it where a family can go Monday, Wednesday, and then that's it for the week, and then maybe Tuesday and Thursday virtual online or something along that lines? Or is that the recommended? When we talked um, to some of the families, but also daycare providers, that was a source of concern because we didn't know who was going to be with the kids that would be at home on that Friday or some of those days. So that was the ultimate decision. We decided to go every other day and just keep it consistent so that families would know Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week, next week is Tuesday, Thursday. And, and then again, in, in having to work with the consortium, making sure that we're consistent with our days, we, we've all agreed with the, within the hybrid model, that would be the approach we take. Just keep it every other day. If you're on a six-day cycle, you keep it on that six-day cycle. Um, and again, we feel that that would provide the students with the most amount of face-to-face -face or live instruction um, on a regular basis, rather than if we only did a couple days a week, Hello? Nope. Am I kicked out? Can you hear me now? Anyone else? You heard? Okay. So I apologize, but again, this was in collaboration with the other districts and we're looking at uh, maximized instructional time, maximized time that students can physically be here. Um, you, you know, that was the approach we decided on. Jeff and then Gary. Uh, my question is, in the phase, are the classrooms with the students in class going to remain in that class? 
the entire day. And if they are in this city outbreak, a student gets that. What protocols are in place for that entire class, the teacher, uh, in terms of quarantining and, and moving from that phase down? Again, we would look at the contact tracing. We contact the Department of Health. We'd, we'd have the students monitored. Uh, we'll follow all the guidelines that, that are, are set forth by them. Uh, and if we have to have, you know, X amount of students work from home uh, on a given period of time, um, we still have that live component available to them when they're at home uh, so that they can still access the information that our teachers are uh, providing. Now, again, if the teachers fall ill and we have to get a substitute in, we, then we do that. Um, you know, they're, they're, these are things that, uh, when it comes to flexibility, we, we have to be on our toes and, and making sure that everybody is uh, monitored, everybody is uh, following our, our protocol and procedures. You know, and making sure that, now, going back to your first question about will they remain in the classroom, primarily at the elementary level. Yes, they'll be self-contained, but the high school level, they're going to need to be flowing in and out of different classrooms. Um, but again, we do have procedures in terms of hallway traffic, altered bell schedules, so that not everybody's leaving at the same time, uh, providing extended time for hallway traffic, um, as well as uh, sanitation procedures. Brian? No, we're not pretending to make the possible at every different level. We just have like a minute for a minute. So let's just take a five minute break and then just stop. So, so you're back, you're back, Brandon? Yeah. Um, I have a letter from mine. Apparently there was a glitch. Yeah, I missed the last couple minutes. That's okay. Okay. I don't know. Hello? Hmm. I keep losing the sound here. Guys, we just had uh, internet. 